When the boss placed a large folder on Gerald's desk and said it was urgent, the young man just dropped his hands. He had been trying to finish all his work to go on a long, planned vacation with his wife. And just when it seemed like everything was done, there was a new task. Arguing with the boss was useless, if you don't like it, no one is keeping you here. We'll find other people willing to work for that salary. Especially since Gerald was paid more than the others, and the newcomer could be paid less. And the young man wished the boss success. Good programmers are always in demand, he'll find another job, it's about time. Thanks for paying a good salary, there will be enough savings for a while. Gerald went on vacation with his wife, and then a friend offered him a good project. In the end, he earned more in a short time than he did in a month at his old job. So the young man never regretted his decision to leave his old job. Everything would have been fine, but he and his wife had been having tense relations lately. They had been together for almost 10 years, but something was off. Maybe it was because they couldn't have children, which they really wanted. Time flies, and they won't be young forever. And Gerald decided that their family needed a reboot, or they might end up getting a divorce. His parents advised him to live separately for a while, as absence makes the heart grow fonder. Diana supported her husband's decision, she also needed to sort things out and figure out what to do next with their relationship. And the young man decided to travel to African countries. He had long been drawn to this continent, feeling some sort of attraction to these hot countries. After studying everything in detail, he decided to start his journey in South Africa. With a cry of, the jungle is calling, he set out on the greatest adventure of his life, as he would hardly have the courage for such a thing again. Gerald arrived in the capital of South Africa, planned his vacation in such a way that he had time for sightseeing, excursions, and walks. Plus, he took some books with him to learn new programs. Everything changes very quickly, a short break for a programmer, and you're already out of trend. And reading new literature can only be beneficial. However, this kind of of nature was aggravated by the heat and poverty that the white man observed everywhere. He managed to distract himself from his family problems, but at what cost? Now Gerald found himself in a poor country that could be compared to hell, a collapsed economy, no communications. In short, a country of the destitute, there was no trace of technological progress there. Even in the most remote and poor villages of Spain, life was much better. There were unlikely to be any significant changes in the future for this African country. Most men provided for their families by fighting. Local poverty and unsanitary conditions shocked Gerald, and his only desire was to return home and thank God and his wife for what they had. Looking at the locals, the young man didn't understand how he could be dissatisfied with what he had. It seemed to him that such an existence would definitely plunge him into despair. It was in such places that one could talk about depression. All the complaints and problems of acquaintances in Spain seemed insignificant, if only they tried to live as they do here. But despite everything, people rejoiced in every day, every little thing. Things that were insignificant in Gerald's familiar world, they treasured or could even be upset about. How could one be so enthusiastic about some unnecessary trifle, an old, worn-out t-shirt sent from prosperous countries as humanitarian aid? Gerald imagined how his wife would react if he gave her such a thing. The young man felt uneasy, he wanted to thank God a million times for what he had and the local people didn't see anything special about what was happening in their country. Gerald even thought that they were tired of getting tired of everything that was going on. They just accepted life as it was and didn't despair. They were accustomed to this life, they didn't see anything better, so they just lived in the moment. Gerald had candies with him. Even before entering Somalia, he bought almost a crate of sweets that seemed tasty and very cheap to him. 
He thought he would eat them little by little because there were no special culinary delights there. But his plans changed when the white man began to give candies to local children. Sometimes he thought it was a somewhat selfish act. He felt incredible excitement and happiness when he saw happy children with eyes full of gratitude. And one day, the man noticed that a six year old girl, who had already taken treats several times, did not eat them immediately like others but went somewhere. At first, Gerald thought the girl was afraid that someone would take the delicacy away. But then he realized that this was not the reason. All the locals were friendly with the white man, and everyone helped each other. They shared joy and trouble among themselves. The child would rather share a candy with someone else than secretly eat it herself. And so, the girl returned for a treat once again. Gerald wanted to stop her, ask where she was going, but the girl quickly disappeared. She was in such a hurry that she didn't even notice that someone was talking to her. And after a while, she came back for a new portion. The girl reached out for a candy, and the white man sat in front of her instead of giving her a treat. The girl looked at the man fearfully. She probably thought that the uncle had already noticed her and would scold her. But Gerald tried to explain something to her with gestures. Eventually, the girl understood that nothing bad would happen to her and led the stranger to her place. They came to a hut. Gerald was already used to such poor, semi-dilapidated structures that could hardly be called buildings, simply made of makeshift materials sheds. We only have such boards lying around on the dump. Even on a summer cottage, sheds seem to be built stronger. But here it was normal. Looking at such conditions, even a man involuntarily felt his heart constrict. What can we say about impressionable women? And here is also a little girl with all her bones sticking out. But when they entered the hut, Gerald's heart squeezed even more. There were two more children there, even younger than this one. And all of them were so skinny that it was unclear how they were still alive. Only huge eyes. Meanwhile, the girl carefully handed out candies to the little ones and began instructing them like an adult. The children obediently looked at their older sister. Gerald watched and didn't understand anything. The girl took out some rag and gave it to the kids to play with. Upon closer inspection, Gerald realized that it was a homemade doll. The white man decided to sit with the children and wait for their parents, trying to communicate with the little ones as best he could. But the only thing he understood was their names and that they were three girls. It was already evening, but none of the adults came to the cabin, and the eldest girl was acting as if she were in charge. Gerald suspected that the children were living alone. He went to the neighboring cabin hoping to learn more. There was a young woman with a breastfed baby, and several other children were running around outside. The man managed to understand that the girls he was interested in really lived alone. The white man decided to learn more about these little sisters. Coming to the hotel, he found a translator, and the next day they returned to the cabin. It turned out that these girls really lived alone. Their parents disappeared four months ago, and the girls survived thanks to their older sister, who provided them with food and took care of them. The locals also sometimes helped the orphans, but everyone lived in poverty. Everyone, both adults and children, tried not to die of hunger here. Gerald couldn't just watch this calmly, he was overwhelmed with emotions. He understood that, for sure, not only in this village but also throughout Somalia, and even in the whole of Africa, there were thousands of children who lived on the brink of life and death. Of course, he couldn't help everyone. Every time he saw an emaciated child, he wanted to do something for them. But the more he gave, the more new children appeared. And those little ones he had were just small pleasures, a little ray of light for these unfortunate children. He alone was not able to cope with everything. Gerald returned to the hotel. 
For a while, he thought about everything, and then he called his wife. He was impressed and emotionally told her about everything that was happening in this country. How poorly people lived, how they knew how to rejoice and appreciate what they had. Anyway, Gerald said, calming down a bit, I love you. That's the first thing. We're doing great, we'll get through everything. That's the second thing. And. There was an awkward silence. Gerald didn't know how to tell his wife about his decision. Can we adopt them? Diana suggested uncertainly, afraid that her husband wouldn't understand. Are you serious? Gerald was taken aback. I know it's probably almost impossible. But at least we can save these three girls, right? If not us, then no one. They're not wanted by anyone there, everyone just turns a blind eye. Who wants to look at these horrors? It's easier to live in your own little bubble and complain. The young woman spoke quickly, trying to persuade her husband before he could interrupt or object. And the young man breathed a sigh of relief, this was exactly what he wanted to talk to his wife about. Before speaking with Diana, he had remembered the fable about the boy and the stars on the beach and realized that every person is capable of doing something, even if it's small. You don't need to take on an impossible burden trying to save everyone. You just need to do what you can, something that can make life better. The essence of the parable was that a boy walked along a beach scattered with millions of starfish that had been washed up by the tide. The boy was throwing them back into the ocean. An old man who was walking by asked him why he was doing this. The child replied that in the morning the tide would come in and the starfish would die if they were not thrown back into the sea. The old man was surprised and, at the same time, angry at the child's foolishness. He thought it was useless to do this because nothing could be changed globally, and it was impossible to save all these sea creatures. Then the boy picked up another starfish and replied that his attempts could not change much, but they would definitely change the life of that particular starfish. And he threw it back into the sea. The old man silently began to do the same. And later, other vacationers joined them, and all the starfish were saved. Similarly, Gerald and Diana could not change the situation in Somalia as a whole but they could change the lives of three little girls. They made a firm decision to take them to their homeland, Spain. Gerald started to find out how to adopt the girls on the spot, and his wife was going through the authorities in Spain. From both sides, they made seemingly inhumane efforts to adopt dark-skinned children who did not even have any documents. Sometimes it seemed that there was no more strength, and they wanted to give up. But Gerald had already given hope to the little girls, and he could not betray them. They and their wife went through seven circles of hell before they were able to bring the children and take care of them. The young man had to return to Spain. When the formalities were settled, they came together for the girls. It was not fast, it was unbelievable, but they succeeded. After this journey, Gerald and Diana's relationship in the family improved. They had three daughters. The young couple never had biological children, but they loved the three Somali girls as their own. For them, there was no difference that they were dark-skinned and completely different. The adoptive parents gave the girls everything to make them happy and not remember the horrors that happened in their homeland. The sisters quickly settled in Spain, learned Spanish, and started to interact with other children. Of course, it wasn't easy at first in Spain. Many people were unfamiliar with dark-skinned individuals, especially at school. There were children who bullied the girls, but the sisters, accustomed to always being together, quickly adapted and didn't allow each other to be hurt. The girls appreciated the opportunity they had been given. Their parents told them about and showed them the difficult lives of people in their homeland. Gerald and Diana wanted their daughters to grow up to be good people, and the sisters studied hard to achieve success in life. 
Over time, they grew up, each fluent in several languages. Times changed, and there were many opportunities that didn't exist almost 20 years ago. Each of the girls found her place in life, and they have loving parents whom they also love. Someday, the girls would like to visit their homeland, Somalia, and see their roots. And maybe, like their parents, they will also help their fellow countrymen in some way. Gerald and Diana believe that they have the best family. They have a large family, three young women and their adult daughters. In 17 years, none of them regretted that life turned out this way. Someone has to collect the stars, even if no one else supports you. But you know that your life is not wasted for someone. Gerald and Diana taught their daughters to appreciate the small but important things.